So what type of home do you live in? Do you rent or own it? I own it. You own it? Is it single family, multi-unit, or condo or apartment? Single family. And do you know an approximate date that you moved in? June of 2009. Okay. Have you always lived here in Berrien County? Most of my life. Most of your life? Okay, um, so how did you end up living here? Uh, I was raised here. My family came here from the South from the Carolinas in the 1700s. Okay. Been here ever since. So I, too, came from a very small town, you know, very similar to Nashville, Georgia, um, in Berrien County, and I currently do live in Berrien County as well. Um, can you tell me about, like, what kind of home you live in? Um, I live in a basic, small uh, home here in Berrien County. I live in a rural part of Berrien County in the corner of a small farm owned by my parents. I live on a, an acre okay. in a very rural country setting. Okay. All right. Um, so this next part, we're just going to talk about why you did or did not or really will not adopt rooftop solar. Um, so have you invested in solar either on the rooftop of your home, on your property, or as part of your business or program through your utility service? No. No? Okay. Since you have not, would you... Um, if you had the option, put it on your rooftop? Absolutely. Why? Uh, on my rooftop, I think I would get the best exposure to the sun's energy, and it would also be um, up and out of the way and not taking up space for any other activity or need that I might have on my property. Okay. So I'd like to talk a little bit about rooftop solar adoption in general. And here's a map of the United States. And on this map... Um, I want you to circle where you think the most people adopt rooftop solar energy. Mm. And it can be multiple or just one general area. Yeah, I think that'll do it probably. Okay, so the um, the East Coast and the Florida area, why do you think the people there um, in those communities, what makes them so different from us here in Berrien County? I think they may have different, um, different perspective as to the benefits of solar energy and possibly be more willing to allocate a larger portion of their income, discretionary income, to power their house through solar energy. Okay, and what kind of people do you think live in those communities? I know you said they have different perspectives, but do you think they're different than us? I don't think they're different from us in terms of how they value solar energy. I think that they may have more experience with solar energy in their communities and therefore have been exposed and can, can more easily see the benefits which might make them more willing to spend their money on it. Okay. Um, and here's a state of Georgia map. And so on this one, I want you to do the same thing. So in a general area or areas that you think people adopt solar energy. Okay. So you, heard, you circled pretty much the whole state. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me why? I think Georgia is is largely a subtropical area and has a, a lot of exposure to sunlight that would be great for, you know, of course, powering solar panels. And I think we've got probably pockets of people across the state that can see the benefit and can afford such technology in their homes. Okay. Um, so what about most of your close friends here in Georgia? Do they have solar? No. No. Why do you think they do not? Too expensive. Cost prohibitive. Okay. So if, if it wasn't cost prohibitive, do you think they would adopt it then? I think they'd be much more willing, especially if they had some guidance in selecting such systems and installing them. Okay. Okay. So now, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you a few questions regarding the role of food in your day-to-day -day life. Um, can you tell me what your regular day looks like with food, like your meals, any snacks, that kind of stuff? What do they typically look like? Uh, I'll typically in the morning uh, will, I'll either have a bowl of cereal at home or I may pick something up fast food on the way into work. And I'll often will bring leftovers from supper the night before for lunch. And often, especially on the weekdays, I'll cook at night something. Okay. Um, 
So that's kind of interesting. My meals pretty much look the same. Most of the time for breakfast, I don't really eat anything, though. I just eat coffee and let's get to school. Um, can you tell me about your go-to meal and why? So if you had a one go-to meal that you cook often or that you like, can you tell me about it? I love a good steak, baked potato, and salad. It's easy to make. It's quick. And also scrumptious. I agree. Nothing beats a good steak. You got that right. So it's easy to cook, you said? Mm hmm Okay. Um, how often do you cook your own meals? We'll say in a week. Three to five days a week. Three to five times. Okay. Sometimes more, sometimes less. All right. So I know it's just you and your daughter that live in your household, but are you the main one that makes the decisions about the food you purchase, or does she have a say-so in that? She has say-so, but I'm usually leading the way. Okay, and you mostly prepare the meals and purchase the food? Usually, usually. Okay, so what are some things that you consider when you make your food choices? I really try to be cognizant of the nutritional value, high fiber, low fat, cover all your food groups, plenty of protein, have your carbs covered. But, okay. You know, you want it to be well balanced and nutritious. Right. If you can. It's so hard, though. It is, especially on the go and busy mm -hmm. schedules. It's, it's very hard. Um, how often do you purchase food for your household? Is it once a week, twice a week, twice a month? Probably half a dozen times a month. Okay. Um, and paint this picture for me. Let's say you're taking a trip to purchase food from the grocery store, Walmart, wherever. What does that look like for you? Like, what's your, do you have a set thing, rule? I don't have a set rule other than I try to only purchase what I can use within the next three to five days. I try to purchase things that are not easily perishable or at least things that have a perish date that is within a feasible time frame for on a busy schedule. All right, so when it comes to feeding you and your family, what are some challenges you face? For example, like for me, um, having a busy schedule and staying gone a lot, I don't get to cook as much as I would like, so I have to eat out more. Mm -hmm. um, time is a factor. Um, not necessarily money, but we try to buy groceries once a month, so money could be a factor towards the end of the month. Right. Um, so what are some challenges you face? I think planning nutritious affordable meals that appeal to diverse palates. In other words, I want something that everybody's going to eat, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll eat most anything, but my daughter's pretty good that way, but at 13 years old, she's certainly more picky than I right. am. Right. So you would say just making sure that it, it's a well-rounded meal that fits everyone's needs, mm -hmm. okay?